with that, uh, Liv, let's call the roll, see if we have a quorum. Okay, Council Member Atlas Ingebretson. Atlas Ingebretson. Barber. Here. Chambliss. Ch Chambliss. I see her. I'm here. Cummings. Here. Ferguson. Here. Fredson. Here. Gonzalez. Johnson. Lee. Here. Lilligren. Here. Lindstrom. Here. Musse. Here. Sterner. Here. Vento. Here. Wolf. Here. Zirin. Zirin. And Chair Zelly. I'm here. Uh, I believe we have a quorum. Uh, now on to the approval of the minutes. Uh, we don't need a vote, but uh, I'm sorry, approval of the agenda. Well, we don't need a vote for agenda, but uh, unless anybody has any questions or comments or disapproval, uh, now is the time to mention it. Uh, hearing none, uh, we uh, uh, will adopt the agenda. Moving on to the minutes, which is our first order of business. This is the minutes from our meeting on August 12th. Uh, 2020. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? Yes, Chair Zelly. This is uh, Council Member Sterner. I motion to approve the minutes. Thank you, Council Member. Is there a second? Second. By Vento the seconds. Thank you, Council Member Vento. Um, any discussion? All right, Liz, call the roll. Atlas Singapretson. Barber? Aye. Chambliss? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Ferguson? Aye. Fredson? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Lee? Aye. Lilligren? Aye. Lindstrom? Aye. Musse? Aye. Sterner? Aye. Vento? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Zeren? Chair Zelly? Aye. The minutes uh, stand approved. Uh, on to the business uh, item. Uh, this is a uh, uh, joint reports from the Transportation, Environment, Community Development, and Management Committees of the preliminary budget, which we uh, uh, talked about uh, at length. And uh, I believe maybe Mary and Chris. Mary, are you going to say a few comments first? Um, Mr. Chair, thank you. I will. Um, so um, before you today, you've got um, the adoption of the preliminary budget and and certification of our maximum levy. Um, and um, again, this is the beginning of the budget process. Um, we will come forward with a public comment draft budget where we will add in the, the capital portion of the budget and then final adoption. Um, in December, so public comment in October and final adoption in December. Um, I wanted to say that um, this was a very challenging budget to put together this year um, with a number of assumptions related to COVID and recovery from COVID. So um, really kudos to our budget teams in all of the divisions. So Marie and Stuart from Regional Administration, first time through this budget process for them. They did a fantastic job. Um, Ed Petrie, um, Ned Smith and Heather Augustin Hebner from from um, CD and Transit Transportation and um, Environmental Services. So just kudos to them. 
Um, I sent out last night to you and we've posted to the agenda, the budget and brief. Um, that's really your talking points for for this preliminary budget and, and um, meant for you to be able to use along with the budget um, tables that, that were also posted um, to be able to answer questions and kind of tell the story of, of our um, 2021 budget. So um, with that, I will move it to Management Committee Chair to propose the action. Um, I think all we'd like to do is make, make the motion to accept the preliminary budget and the 0% uh, levy increase for the 2021 budget year. Thank, thank you. Uh, is there a second? Johnson seconds. Thank you, Judy. Uh, any discussion, questions? Got it all? All right, uh, Liz, please call the roll. Atlas Ingebrigtsen. Barber. Aye. Chambliss. Aye. Cummings. Aye. Ferguson. Aye. Bradson. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Lee. Aye. Lilligren. Aye. Lindstrom. Aye. Musse. Aye. Sterner. Aye. Vento. Aye. Wolf. Aye. And Chair Zelli. Aye. All right, the budget is passed. We're on to the consent agenda. Uh, can I have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda? Cummings move. Thank you. Second. Second by Barber. Thank you, Councilmember Barber. Any discussion? All right, hearing none, Liz, please call the roll. Barber? Aye. Chambliss? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Ferguson? Aye. Fredson? Aye. Ben Sorry, Johnson? Aye. Lee? Aye. Lilligren? Aye. Lindstrom? Aye. Musse? Aye. Sterner? Aye. Bento? Aye. Wolf? Aye. And Chair Zelli? Aye. That motion carried. Uh, on to the reports of standing committee. Uh, and first report is from uh, Community Development. Council Member Lilligren. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, community Development brings one item forward for consideration. It's business item 2020-216. It's to release the draft amendment to the 2040 Regional Parks Policy Plan for co public comment and to set the hearing date. That's some background information. Over the past 11 months, council staff developed the 2040 regional policy, regional parks policy plan update in consultation with the regional park implementing agencies and their boards, the community development committee, the Metropolitan Parks and Open Space Commission, and the Land Use Advisory Committee. The amendment proposes 26 new regional park trails additions or expansions to the regional park system, uh, new policy for regional park and regional trail boundary adjustments, language further describing bridging facilities, incorporation of the equity analysis requirements for park master plans, which the council adopted last year, update of the work plan for regional parks and additional par policy clarifications and updated text. The Metropolitan Parks and Open Space Commission and the Community Development Committee have recommended that the council accept the draft plan and initiate the public comment period. 
Mr. Chair, I move that the Metropolitan Council first release the 2020 draft amendment to the 2040 Regional Parks Policy Plan for public comment and that we authorize a public comment period from August 26, 2020 to October 30th, 2020, including a public hearing to be conducted at 4 p.m. on Monday, October 19th, 2020 at the regularly scheduled Community Development Committee meeting. Great, thank you. Is there a second? Second by Lee. Dental second. Thank you. Uh, any discussion? Yes, Chair Zelli, this is uh, Council Member Sterner. This has a question. Yes. Uh, my question is, it looks like we, we have all the counties represented, but there's nothing for Dakota, which is a, quite a large county and large area. And I'm just wondering why that is uh, in this trail system. Uh, so I know that it's very important in Dakota County with trails, why they're not in on our proposal here. Uh, I don't know, Robert or uh, maybe uh, Emmett, is there, are you, uh, can you answer that? Mr. Chair, I do, I do see that Director Community De Development Director Barajas is on the call, so I would turn to her, please, for response. Sure, sure thank, thank you. you. Mr. Chair, uh, council members, um, the proposals at this time were submitted by implementing agencies. They were not driven by the council um, and Dakota County uh, did not submit additional uh, uh, or additions in this process um, for that. And you'll notice, I think one other county also did not submit any additions. They're working on the portions of the system that are already part of their plan and um, didn't have additions for this particular process at this time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any further questions or discussion? Uh, hearing none, uh, Liz, call the roll. Barber? Aye. Chambliss? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Ferguson? Aye. Fetson? Johnson? Aye. Lee? Aye. Lilligren? Aye. Lindstrom? Aye. Musse? Aye. Sterner? Aye. Bento? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Cherizelli? Aye. That motion passed. Next uh, is the report from the Environment Committee, Council Member Lindstrom. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. We're looking at business item 2020-221. This requests the award and execution of a construction contract for interceptors 1SP200 and 201. This is a rehabilitation through Battle Creek Regional Park from Upper Apton Road to the park entrance road. In 2016, the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency approved a facility plan prepared by environmental services that identified several rehabilitation projects needed in the St. Paul collection system. And the rehabilitation program is driven by the interceptor condition assessments. Uh, much of the uh, of the pipe structures in this project are rated as condition four or condition five. Condition five is as bad as it gets, um, so these uh, require immediate attention, mainly due to corrosion and structural defects. So we have a cured in place pipe or SIP cured in place pipe will be installed to line 5,520 feet of 30 to 33 inch concrete pipe through the regional park. An invitation for bid was advertised back in May. There were 43 plan holders and the bid opening occurred in June, June 29th. We received two bids. The Office of Equal Opportunity set a disadvantaged business enterprise goal of 11% for the project. Minger Construction Company passed the DBE evaluation by meeting the goal with a commitment of over 
and was the lowest responsive responsible bidder and therefore mr chair and members i move that the met council authorize the regional administrator to award and execute a construction contract for the interceptors one sp 200 and 201 this is uh project number eight zero eight eight two three contract number two zero p zero five one with minger construction company for their low responsive responsible bid of eight million five hundred twenty thousand seven hundred twenty three dollars The chair is looking for a second. This is Fretz, and I'm happy to second. Looks like maybe we've lost the chair. Liz, do you want to call no, the roll? I'm, no, oh. I'm, I'm here. I don't know. If, can you hear me? All right. Uh, any discussion, question? All right, let's call the roll. Barber? Aye. Chambliss? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Ferguson? Aye. Fredson? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Lee? Aye. Lilligren? Aye. Lindstrom? Aye. Moose? Aye. Sterner? Aye. Bento? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Cherizelli? Aye. Uh, thank you. We have no reports from the Management Committee, so the next report is from the Transportation Committee. Council Member Barber. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We have four items for the council this evening. Uh, the first is business item number 2020-201 is a motion to request the chair and the regional administrator to execute contract 19P383A for the MTS onboard technology maintenance with Procellus Incorporated. This contract is for the maintenance of technology on MTS's fleet of approximately 1,173 vehicles. Onboard technology supported under this contract include maintenance, repairs, installation, and removal of security cameras, onboard routers, scheduling dispatch units, and payment systems. The contract is to be awarded to Priscellus Incorporated, who was ranked the best valued bidder in a competitive bidding process. Priscellus is both an MCUP certified and veteran-owned business. The contract is a three-year contract with two um, potential one-year extensions. The amount of the contract is not to exceed six point zero zero or six point zero four four million dollars for five years. Therefore, Mr. Chair, I move that the Metropolitan Council authorize the chair and the regional administrator to execute contract nineteen P three eight three A with Procellus Incorporated in the amount of six million or six point zero four four million dollars. Thank you. Is there a second? Second by Lee. Thank you, Council Member Lee. Uh, any discussion, questions? All right, Liz, all the roll. Barber? Aye. Chambliss? Aye. Cummings? Cummings? Uh, Ferguson? Aye. Preston? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Lee? Aye. Lilligren? Aye. Lindstrom? Aye. Moose? Aye. Sterner? Aye. Bento? Aye. Wolf? Aye. And Chair Zelli. Aye. That motion carried. Uh, Councilmember Barber. <laughs> oh, you might be muted. 
Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair, Council Members. Uh, business item number 2020-219 is regarding the passage of Resolution Metro D Line BRT project and associated locally requested scope on behalf of the Council and local agency partners. The proposed council action would allow for the acquisition of approximately 103 temporary and three permanent easements for the construction of the region's third arterial BRT project, uh, substantially replacing the popular Route 5 bus service. Temporary easements generally extend five to 15 feet into adjacent properties for construction purposes, and the permanent easements are primarily sidewalk and bikeway easements, which would be conveyed to our agency partners. All acquisitions and relevant activities are funded with existing and available D-line funds. In order to secure um, a necessary property interested prior to the, um, in, in order to secure necessary necessary property interest prior to award of the construction contract. Therefore, Mr. Chair, I move that the Metropolitan Council pass resolution 2020-9, authorizing acquisition of temporary and permanent easements necessary for the Metro D-Line BRT project and associated local request scope, as well as authorizing council staff to initiate condemnation proceedings on behalf of the council and local agency partners for parcels that cannot be acquired by negotiation. Thank you. Is there a second? Chambliss seconds. Thank you, uh, Councilmember Chambliss. Any uh, discussion? If not, Liz, call the roll. Barber? Aye. Chambliss? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Ferguson? Aye. Fredson? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Lee? Aye. Lilligren? Aye. Lindstrom? Aye. Musse? Aye. Sterner? Sterner? Aye. Bento? Aye. Wolf? Aye. And Chair Zelli? Aye. That motion carried. Councilmember Barber. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair and Council Members, business item number 2020-227, same week, is an amendment to the grant agreement with the State of Minnesota and Metro Transit for the Bus Operator Apprenticeship Program. Metro Transit, ATU Local 1005, and the State of Minnesota have partnered on a state registered apprenticeship program since September 2018. The apprenticeship consists of a formal mentoring program, structure group activities, and ride-alongs for the critical first year of employment. There are currently 119 registered apprentices and 63 mentors active in the program who are benefiting greatly from this program. This amendment, which is the third amendment, is to receive up to $265,000 in reimbursable expenses. To date, approximately 1 million grant funding has been received and Metro Transit fully expects to claim the full value of the amendment. Therefore, Madam Chair, I move, or Madam Chair, sorry, Mr. Chair, um, that the Metropolitan Council authorize the Regional Administrator to execute Grant Agreement 3 for Contract 2019-222 slash Metro 2018 MAI with the state of Minnesota. Uh, thank you, Councilmember Weber. I am very gender fluid, so I. <laughs> so uh, what I just read instead of <laughs> yeah. Is there a second? This is Fred, and I'll second. Thank you. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none. Liz, call the roll. Barber. Aye. Chambliss. Aye. Cummings? Aye. Ferguson? Ferguson? Aye. Fredson? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Lee? Aye. Lilligren? Aye. Lindstrom? Aye. Musse? Aye. Sterner? Aye. Bento? Aye. Wolf? 
Aye. And Chair Zelli. Aye. That motion's carried. Oh, one more item, Councilmember Barber. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair and Council Members, business item number 2020-228 is the same week item is requesting the Metropolitan Council to authorize the Chair and the Regional Administrator to execute the full funding grant agreement for Southwest LRT if awarded by the Federal Transit Administration. This action would allow for the receipt of $928.8 million in federal dollars for the Southwest LRT project, clearing the way for the completion of Minnesota's largest ever public works project. After completing all technical assessments, the FTA advanced the FFGA to Congress for the 30-day notification on August 4th, 2020. This action will allow the chair and the regional administrator to sign the agreement when the FTA is ready following the notification period. The receipts of this award will mark the, mark the culmination of decades of, of hard work by project staff, elected officials, Hennepin County, MnDOT, Corridor Cities, Watershed Districts, and Park Districts, business leaders, and community advocates who have all put in countless hours to bring this critical leg of our planned light rail network to fruition. So therefore, I am very pleased, Mr. Chair, to move that the Metropolitan Council authorize the Chair and the Regional Administrator to execute the full funding grant agreement for the Southwest LRT, the Green Line Extension Project, with the Federal the Transit Administration in amounts of, of 928.8 million if Do you awarded want to continue by the your meeting? Press 1 to confirm. If there is no response, the conference will end. I got so excited that I forgot to unmute. Uh, thank you. Is there a second? Coming second. Any discussion? I have to say, this is long in the waiting, so still crossing our fingers, but very important step. Uh, any other questions, discussion? All right, Liz, call the roll. Barber? Aye. Chambliss? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Ferguson? Aye. Fredson? Yes. Aye. Jobson? Aye. Lee? Aye. Lilligan? Aye. Lindstrom? Aye. Musse? Aye. Sterner? Aye. Vento? Aye. Wolf? Aye. And Chair Zelli? Aye. That motion carried. Uh, thank you, Councilmember Barber. Uh, our final item is the Joint Report of Environment and Community Development Committees. Councilmember Lilligren. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. The following two business items are comprehensive plans for communities connected to the regional wastewater system. They were all heard in both the Community Development and Environment Committees. For both communities, council staff found that the 2040 plans conform to regional systems plans, are consistent with council policies, and are compatible with the plans of adjacent and affected jurisdictions. The first is business item 2020-212. It's the Credit River Township 2040 Comprehensive Plan uh, and, the, and the approval of their comprehensive sewer plan. Mr. Chair, I understand that there will be a motion to amend this motion for the purpose of correcting a clerical error in the review record, but I'll make the initial motion to get it before us. I move that the Metropolitan Council, yeah, adopt the attached advisory comments and review record and take the following actions. From the Community Development Committee, the recommendation is to authorize the Credit River Township to place its 2040 comprehensive plan into effect. Also revise the township's forecast upward as shown in table one and establish sanitary sewer forecast as shown in table two of the attached review record. Also revise the township's commun uh, community designation for portions of the community to emerging suburban edge as shown in figure three of the attached review record and advise the township to provide the council with the date that the Scott County WMO approved the local water resource, local water management plan and the date that the township, oh, I'm sorry, that's a duplication, okay. And also in the final plan submission to the council, update the future parks and trails map plan on pages four through 15, uh, eight through five and eight through 19 to be consistent with the regional park system map that appears in the township's 2015 system statement. 
and to implement, implement the advisory comments in the review record for land use and water supply. And from the Environment Committee, that the, uh, that the Council revised the Regional Waste Water System Plan, that's the long-term service area map, to reflect the timing of Regional Wastewater Service for the northern portion of the township from a post-2040 to a 2040 timing period. And that the plan states the state disposal system or the SDS permit for the territory community treatment system that expired in February 2019. When the SDS permit is reissued, the township shall submit a copy of the permit to the council for our records. When the final version of the wastewater collection system feasibility study is completed, the township shall submit a complete copy to the council for its records that the township shall submit copies of all ordinances related to sanitary sewer service to the council after the town board adoption, including the resolution that adopts the council's waste discharge rules, which establish the requirements for using the regional wastewater disposal system. Also a copy of the fully executed inter-community agreement between the township and the city of Savage outlining the terms of wastewater service. It shall be submitted to the council for our records. The agreement will need to reflect the city's billing, the township for the costs related to the wastewater treatment of flow from the township to the city. Due to the age of the housing, which is scheduled to be phased off the uh, subsurface sewage treatment uh, systems and expected to be high, the condition of the existing service between the home and the point of the new connection should be evaluated and either replaced or rehabilitated to address potential sources of um, INI. And each individual phase out SSTS, septic tank and soil distribution system needs to be decommissioned consistent with Minnesota rule chapter 7080.2500. And I make that motion. Thank you. Uh, is there a second? Thank Second, you, Mr. Mr. Chair. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> You're stepping on my district, Peter. This is Council Member Wolf. I would like to make a, a second to that motion, and also I would like to make a motion to amend. Yes. Right. Mr. Chair, I move to amend Committee Chair Lilligren's motion as follows. In Table 1, which is the Credit River Township township forecast of the attached review record change the township proposed forecast for 2040 from 2200 households to 2240 households okay that is a important correction and uh, council member lilligan i assume uh, you will accept that as a friendly amendment all right any uh, discussion on the motion as amended Questions? Hearing none. Liz, call the roll. Barber? Aye. Chambliss? Chambliss? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Ferguson? Aye. Fredson? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Lee? Aye. Lilligren? Aye. I got thumbs up from the video <laughs> saying aye. aye. Okay, yeah. thanks. Uh, Lindstrom? Aye. Musse? Aye. Sterner? Aye. Vento? Aye. Wolf? Aye. And Chair Zelli. Aye. That motion carries. Uh, one more item, Council Member Lilligren. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And finally, uh, the uh, final business item is 2020 213. It's to authorize the 2040 Comprehensive Plan for the City of Cottage Grove and to approve their Comprehensive Sewer Plan. Mr. Chair, I move that the Metropolitan Council adopt the attached advisory comments and review record and take the following actions. The recommendation from the Community Development Committee is to authorize the City of Cottage Grove to place its 2040 Comprehensive Plan into effect. 
and to advise the city to provide the council with the date it adopts its final uh, LWMP and with a copy of the final adopted local water management plan that will be included in the final plan document and to implement the advisory comments in the review record for forecast. The recommendation from the Environment Committee is to approve the City of Cottage Grove's comprehensive sewer plan and advise the city that it will need to submit a revised breakdown of regionally sewered and unsewered forecast that reflects the total citywide forecast when the county uh, subsurface sewage treatment system information is available. Thank you, Councilman Bill Is there a second to that motion? And the second. Thank you, Riva. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, Liz. Barber. Aye. Chambliss. Aye. Cummings. Aye. Ferguson. Aye. Bradson. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Lee. Aye. Lilligren. Yes. Aye. Lindstrom. Aye. Musse. Musse. Aye. Sorry. Aye. Sterner. Aye. Bento. Aye. Wolf. Aye. And Chair Zelli. Aye. That motion carries. Uh, well, we've conducted a lot of business today, and we did it very efficiently. And uh, I know um, we uh, are having a shorter meeting, it looks like, but uh, I think we deserve that, given the fleeting days of summer. And uh, we are all putting in a lot of time, and they are, and and we expect, given that we have a lot of issues uh, before us this fall, uh, we will uh, certainly be facing them. Um, are there any uh, reports that any council members would like to provide at this point? How about uh, Mary, do you have anything from the regional administrator to report? Mr. Chair, I'm good. And uh, Anne, our general counsel, you have anything? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, no report. Well, hearing that, uh, it's uh, uh, it, you, normally the state fair would be opening tomorrow, right, or tonight, but uh, sorry, we'll all get Prano Pops elsewhere. Have a wonderful week, and uh, I look forward to seeing you all very soon. This meeting is adjourned. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Stay cool.